Hello Internet and welcome to my first Unity Dots tutorial. Um, or rather a cry for help because the documentation is ju just a mess and it took me a few days to figure this out and um, yeah today we're going to do raycast completely in multi-threaded or almost completely. I'll still gotta figure out the last part, maybe I got a solution but uh, just wanted to share you with this with you because like I said it took me four days and so much googling and watching tutorials and nothing that really directly to, uh, directly pointed me towards the direction that I needed to be going. Um, yeah. So basically what we have here is 1000 entities um, a few of the, no, not, not, there we go, a few uh, colliders from the Unity Dots physics system. I'm just using Unity Physics, not Havoc, because all these license shit is, I don't know, it's just bothering me, it's annoying, it's stuff that Unity has to stop being annoying. Anyway, so all these rows are just uh, blocks, anything else is just a rendered entity, there's no physics to nothing like this. Um, I can show you my left monitor on this entity, so here we just have a few entities, nothing physical, so uh, these entities can walk through the walls, just um, yeah, don't be, be too um, scared by that, um, otherwise all the entities will just walk the same patrol route because I haven't updated that uh, yet. Uh, because it's it's a DOTS based system, I will have to write my own uh, system uh, to set it up and setting up DOTS component in the Unity editor is another completely different thing, I don't want to talk about that so um, because I like to uh, set up um, my custom nav mesh and stuff like that and I would like to do that with uh, a custom tool but yeah, it's not possible because it's not much things to do, just massive kind of values you have to handle and type in by hand. I don't want to do that. So, anyways, um, you might see this um, little cube over here. No, not that cube, that cube. There we go. And uh, if I switch to my left mo uh, monitor, okay, you know, you don't see the cube anymore. We got this over here, this cube. I can just freely move around. And on my main camera, I have a script called the player controller script. It's nothing interesting yet. But if I open it, uh, we can just see that uh, we got a public transform of the cube. And so when I move the cube, our position will be. Um, changed um, just a, a random reference just a vector 3 position inside of the script but this is a public static script so I can access the script within our um, drug component system or system based scripts or whatever you want to call them so um, it's just a simple way of, of um, handling data on the main thread uh, because it's just a single instance and we can uh, uh, easily handle it over here and um, later on we can just easily access it with, the, with our jobs. So, um, what did I do here? Oh, oh, that did I do here. Um, I didn't even finish my comment. Anyways, so um, yeah, basically let's just, before I spell the code, I, I showed it already, I know. Um, go back to Unity, it might take some time, there we go. And so now whenever I move this cube and uh, all these entities are, are raycasting uh, to the cube, um, uh, if they can see it they will walk towards this position, if they cannot see it they will do their routine route. And on the top right of course we have the data just to show you how, we have exac exactly 1000 entities on the screen. They are not rigged, they are not anything, it's just uh, just a math mesh, anything we are doing here is just translation and all the animation stuff and fine details are done inside the shader. And now when I am moving the cube, just like over here, we can have our first entities that will move to the base. Over here where the cube is, you can see all these entities have collected uh, uh, connected to the cube with the raycast 
and when I do it again you can see some more coming in and when I just put it over here oh I just put it too low I'm sorry uh, you can still see them slowly moving away. I hope you get the idea. I'm, I'm still working on all this. It's really, really early. It's just that uh, the script is supposed to check if an enemy can see the player. Uh, once it can see the player, it just adds one component so that it um, currently goes for the player until it dies or kills the player. So uh, let's go over the script. So basically what we're doing or what the main point of this is to do uh, completely or almost completely multi-threaded uh, ray cast with the job system and all of this based on the entities um, that are going to do the jobs because uh, why should we in the uh, I can show it to you over here in the uh, Raycast command API we uh, are scheduling everything for the mono behavior so everything in here is happening on the main thread only the uh, scheduled job of batch arrays, the job handle Raycast command job schedule batch stuff like here this is just our pretty comfort inf interface to schedule a parallel um, Raycast job, but um, yeah, only this one is done in, in parallel. Anything else on the script is done um, on the main thread. And as you can see here, we only have one Raycast that we're actually doing. I mean, sure, f if you're just doing your your character, just some interaction, that's fine. But we have to somehow control our enemies, and so let's go over it. Um, basically we have a bunch of using stuff, of course our entities, our jobs, um, transforms because we, we will have to calculate from the entity's positions, our physics because we want to do a ray cost, our collection because I'm doing some conversion between floats and vectors, and unity engine because for some reason, I don't know why, um, you have to store your ray cast sit within a unity engine ray cast sit. There is a type of ray cast sit within the unity.physics namespace, but somehow it doesn't work. The API doesn't recommend it. Actually, in the API, you can't really see which one is mentioned. Um, up here it does use the unity engines job and, and uh, actually not the unity physics job and therefore you can see it, it means the unity engine uh, stuff I just uh, figured out by testing it and so right here we have to use the unity engine ray cast it, um, which I think is the result of why we're going to have to go into the main thread back again but uh, more on that later so, um, first of all, we want to make sure that uh, this uh, script here is updating in groups. So, um, because we are scheduling multiple jobs in dependency on another one another, and we uh, want them to execute within one frame or one step, um, this is quite important. Um, or not quite important because it actually is uh, set from the base but just to make sure and now we start with declaring some variables first off we want to have an entity query which stores the query from the first job and uh, first for each uh, entity dot for each uh, query that we're going to do so um, we can later on get the amount of entities that we want to use and in theory we could use that query again instead of writing all that stuff and something like that or the more fancy stuff but we don't have to and uh, we want to have a buffer system there is different types um, this just worked out pretty fine by testing for me I don't want to go into detail of the different types in here um, I just choose them by testing usually and um, yeah so on create we just want to create the buffer system and um, on our update, so now this is this is going to be big. Um, yeah, we uh, first want to have our data count, um, the amount of entities uh, that are affected by our query, 
And in here we're going to use our query and just use the calculate entity count function so that we can store the amount. And in the next step we want to actually uh, create the concurrent uh, command buffer. So um, yeah, this concurrent command buffer is used for parallel jobs so we can actually use uh, all our jobs in parallel. Um, this is actually just for the case that I want to add components to my entities. So if you don't want to add components based on the outcome of your rate calls, you don't need to add have this. Um, yeah. Uh, next on, I just have my player position, which I can retrieve from my player controller script. So, like I showed in uh, before, it's just the cube that is updated, and so I just have a target that my rate cast goes to because in my final game, all the enemies should look at the player and check if they can see them. And next on, we want to array, uh, allocate some native arrays um, to store the data in between jobs, just like I wrote in the comment. And first of all, we want to have a raycasted of uh, the Unity engine namespace, like I said. Um, it just stores the results, and it's just a native array uh, with the temporary job uh, allocator um, because we want to use it in a parallel job, and it's the length of our data amount. Same goes for our raycast command. This will actually store our raycast commands, so our race. And uh, last but not least, um, in my case, back again, I just need to know um, if we actually hit something or if there is just nothing in between me and the player, in which case I can see the player. Uh, therefore, I just need a boole Boolean variable. So if my collider count is zero, I can just say, OK, I can see the player. And if it's not zero, I can just go for anything else. Um, otherwise, in maybe if you want to iterate further, um, you would have to um, set up some native arrays for the the um, reference types that you want to handle out of your uh, raycast hit. So, um, if you want to access the collider or stuff like that, you will have to put it in here, put some more native arrays in here. In my case, like I said, I just need a true or false value. If you need like as maybe the collision points or something like that. Um, you can put a native enter uh, array of vector three or stuff like that in here and save it in there later on. So um, after that, we want to um, first build our raycast commands built on our entities. And uh, for that, first we need to create a job handle. I could have come up with a better name, but anyways, um, so we can save our, our uh, the outcome of our job um, and access this on further uh, jobs because we have to do a few jobs in this one that will depend on each other. Can do all of this in one step, and um, yeah, basically this is an entity start for each job, but uh, we will exclude the follow component because this is the component that I want to add to the entities if they can see the player and so once it's added I don't need to have them in the system anymore. So um, next on we want to have the in-store entity query in field with our query as reference. So this is just putting out basically the uh, complete query we are sending to the entity world and um, from that on, like I said, we are retrieving our amount of entities that are affected so that we can set up our native arrays. And um, yeah, now I'm just going over the for each uh, statement. And uh, for we need every entity, um, uh, we need the entity, um, uh, we need the entity query index, which is much more important. I don't actually use the entity. Um, Okay, um, but uh, yeah, later on we can um, store the uh, use the entity in query index to um, store it in the right position of our native arrays, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Then we have our translation to calculate uh, um, yeah, our origin of the raycast, and we have our enemy type in my case because of some stuff. 
and are in range in my case because I only want to do this uh, on enemies that are within a certain range which is already handled by another system that just adds or removes this component when the enemies are within a certain range of the player or otherwise better said. So uh, now I have my origin which is just my translation value and in my case I have a vector 3 up because uh, my slime model is the um, type value 0 and so it's adding nothing and my bad model is type value 1 so it's adding vector 1 up and um, yeah that's just so I can do comfortably do my different types of enemies within this uh, next on I have my direction which is my player position minus the translation value and um, next on we are setting up our raycast command so uh, we're accessing our native array of raycast commands and in the query, in query entity in query index slot we're putting our new raycast command origin and direction um, on this you can of course set up more than this, I've just used this and it's based maybe not that no it's actually really bad, I should really update this um, you can also set the maximum distance which is quite important but you don't want to raycast between the player and the entity if it's almost uh, or already too big or already too far away and much more important is you want to set up the uh, layer mask um, you really want to set up everything in your DATS physics to use um, a single layer or just as few layers as you need uh, or as, as logical so um, the engine can really easy um, detect which c uh, objects could be colliding with and which not um, so um, it doesn't make sense to cast this ray for every um, physics layer that you have it, it only needs to cast the, the um, for the default physics layer you use for your gaming world and not for anything else and yeah when that's done we're going to schedule the p job in parallel and uh, put in a random dependency or default dependency um, doesn't really matter at this point uh, yeah that's pretty much it that's uh, how we schedule our, or prepare our raycast commands we are just doing a parallel job um, for each entity that is affected by this query and then we just put, uh, calculate our origin and our direction and put it in the raycast command once that is done we're going to new create a new job handle um, maybe I could have come up with a better name once more um, this is just basically what the um, API tells us in here what I've already uh, um, read out so we'll just schedule our, our raycast batches and just use our raycast amount arrays um, put in the uh, native array where we want to start our results and uh, like I said before this must be the unity engine raycast hit um, because we're using unity physics and stuff like that um, we need to specify it but although I see actually we are not using it I can just delete it well maybe yeah okay so um, even better than that and uh, now we can just uh, store our result length or actually uh, instead of our result length we can just use our data count because it's uh, the same value we are setting up our results uh, uh, as long as the data count is and uh, yeah next uh, because um, this is the um, uh, amount of um, values uh, this parallel job has to uh, iterate over um, and yeah last but not least we are passing in the job handle of our um, of our previous job which builds the uh, race because we can't do a raycast if we don't have any race so this job needs to wait for the other one and uh, yeah that's pretty much it that's uh, just one line of code actually for the uh, multi-threaded uh, raycast 
But like I said before, uh, in, instead of the API, we want to have everything in parallel. We want to uh, create our um, raycast in parallel, and we want to schedule them in parallel, and we want to do stuff because of the results then in parallel. But um, yeah, next on uh, we have to wait till our raycast job has completed. And now uh, I haven't figured out a way around this yet. Maybe um, some of you knows and can put it in the comments. Maybe I can find something and update you on this. But as far as I know, uh, you can only handle the results on the main thread because um, the where is it? The Unity Raycast hit, um, Unity Engine dot Raycast hit is a reference type, and um, yeah, you can only handle that on the main thread. And for that case, or in my case, I just go over each value and just uh, put in my true or false value which I need. So um, depending on how many data or whatever you want to do or want to have, um, yeah, this might be. F a little bit annoying but uh, in the end I think um, you can still just convert any data you, you can retrieve from your raycast hint into biddable um, values so uh, once you've done that so even if you have a collider or anything you can just um, get the the corresponding array and stuff like that and put that into a native array which you can then un um, handle on in your next job so um, yeah basically after your raycast is done you have to go back on the main thread handle your data that came out of the raycast hit and uh, put it into some biddable values so you can put it back into some multi-threadable jobs and once we've done that in my case pretty simple just true or false we can get the next job and this is just adding some components so, um, like once before, if this component doesn't have the follow component, uh, entity doesn't have the follow component yet, for each entity um, we want to have, yeah, we just want to add our um, follow component. So, um, yeah, I'm just checking if um, the hit.entity value is false. So. Um, we haven't hit anything. Um, if we haven't hit anything, we can't see the player because there's nothing in between us. And now we can just use the command buffer add component and add our follow into that. And that we can also schedule, of course, as well in parallel. And therefore, we have everything on site here all our jobs that are retrieving the necessary data, scheduling the arrays, uh, the, the arrays. Um, or the raycasts, scheduling the race, the raycasts, and uh, using our raycast data to execute something of that. Um, everything multi threaded, and it's pretty fine. Uh, maybe, I don't know, you can add something in here as well to, to process this, or maybe Unity can change it so you can um, have your results start in the uh, physics array casted. I don't know. I hope it's going better in the future, but uh, as far as for now, I'm getting pretty good results with it. This all works pretty fun for me. And um, yeah, so um, last but not least, we want to make sure that our egg component job has completed because after it has completed all of our cycle, um, oh, in the egg component job, of course, we want to pass in our handle. So when the uh, wakehouse command schedule batch has completed, which we wait for anyways, we're doing our for loop. After that, we are scheduling our job, which should, of course, wait for this to finish. And um, after that, um, we can uh, dispose of our native arrays because we must do so. We can keep them all the time. And after that, um, yeah, we can just use our buffer system and um, yeah, add our job handle producer for egg component. So uh, after the last job has done, or actually this job has done, where we want to add the uh, components, we can tell the uh, buffer system to safely uh, add the components to the entity. 
and that's pretty much it I hope you learned something I hope this was enjoyable like I said I just wanna quickly do this video put it up there because I think it really is a shame that there's nothing from unity because this is some of the absolute basic stuff you need for any game and um, yeah there should be some more tutorials especially more official tutorials like with the you know, money behavior stuff from unity I'm uh, quite disappointed by that but I hope it's getting better maybe it's getting better we will see in the future and um, for until then thank you a lot for watching uh, please subscribe if you want to see some more tutorials I don't know if I can make some more dots maybe I want to make a documentation on this game project uh, but uh, I will definitely make some nice shader graph tutorials in the future, some nice systems. Uh, play a lot with some math and do some interesting programming stuff. Uh, not just your basic 101 tutorials. So, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. I hope you had some fun and uh, see you next time.